Anna. And I'm Brett at Fuse News. On tonight's show, our top, top stories are... Phones over fathers, comfort eating... The boy who never gave up, and our sports story is high for low. Over to Sam to tell us more about the phone over fathers issue. Recent study has shown that more teenagers are likely to have a mobile phone than a father at home. This follows recent suggestions of Broken Britain, where an increasing amount of children are growing up with separate parents. This could lead to increasing pressure on the criminal justice system, as more, pa more children with lone parents are likely to go to jail. This rise of new technology contributes to this issue, as the population becomes more reliant on this type of communication. Hi, would you rather have a father or a phone? Uh, a father. Why is that? Because a father is like more interactive than a phone. He can he can do more things with your dad, like play football with your dad, but you can't do that with your phone. And right, so the st statistic says that most teenagers have a phone rather than a father. Now, what's your reaction to this? Um, shocked because. Uh, you need a father more than a phone. Um, a recent statistic says that most teenagers these days have a phone rather than a father. What's your reaction to this? I found it a really shocking statistic. It was quite upsetting when I read it because it just sounds like phones more important than fathers. But actually, when I read the in the article, it's not really what it's about. It's um, and also those children still have a father. They just don't get to live with their father. And the article's a bit horrible, it says like dad's just walking out and stuff, I don't think it's quite as simple as that. Um, my, I don't live with my children, um, they're both grown up now anyway, but when they were younger, um, it wasn't that they didn't see me, I saw them a lot, but I live with their mum, and so that doesn't mean, it just made me upset when I read that article, it was like, oh, dads don't care and these kids care more about their phones, I don't think that's what it's saying. But it's quite a shocking statistic that like almost just over half, it's only just over half of children that still live with their mum and their dad. That well, was really sad. Yeah, um, do you think the phones are taking over? Um, I don't think they're taking over. I think they've become really important. It's a shocking statistic and call to action to put strengthening family stability much higher up on the political agenda. I'm Sam Smith reporting for Fuse News. This is Prudder Community High School. Thanks for that. Our next news story is informing us on the effects of comfort eating. <laughs> It's a good thing to get away, you know, you can get away from stuff. It's quite, like, comfort food's nice, sweet stuff, you know, it always tastes good, like McDonald's every now and then. As long as it's in moderation, that is, mm -hmm. you know, then it's okay. I quite like it. And uh, why do you think people comfort eat so much? Well, you know, it's about, it's mostly about, uh, kind of, just calming down a bit. Like, when you're stressed about stuff, you, like, just sit down and have a nice little chunky biscuit, mm -hmm. have McDonald's, you know, after a hard day in the office, yeah. uh, police, police working, you know, working this case right now, I'm just, I'm my little donut here. Yeah. It's, it's good, it's good, it's good stuff. You enjoying that donut? Yeah. It's good. Did you know you gain 12 pounds a year off comfort eating? Yeah. How do you feel about that? It's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> comfort eating can make you gain 12 pounds within a year. So watch what you eat. That was Darcy on that story. We were to our next story about a young inspirational boy who battled death and never gave up. Hi, I'm reporting about the boy who never gave up. 
At the age of seven, Harry White has had four major heart operations and may still have to have face more major surgery. In 2010, Harry's heart stopped beating for five minutes. Doctors fought to get it started again. Once he was um, revived, he was in intensive care for four weeks. Harry suffered from a collapsed lung, so his chest needed to be kept open for a few days because his heart had swollen up so much. Harry was nominated for a bravery award and his mother wanted to thank them very much for helping her child. And now we're going to talk to Karina about how she thinks of the story and how it affects her. Uh, so it's quite a touchy story and uh, I think I'm emotionally attached with the parents and yeah, it's quite upsetting. Thank you. Breaking news, we've just been informed of the brutal death of Chris Rushmere York. More on that with Sophie in just a minute. Today at Pernod Community High School, a murder inquiry has begun into the death of 21-year-old Chris Rushmere York. His body was found at 10 past 11 on Monday morning, where he had two deadly slits through his neck. The weapon used is thought to be a super drug beauty card. The owner of this card, Charlotte, has been charged with the murder due to forensic investigation. With three suspects still under custody, the investigation is still ongoing. There have been many rumours suggesting that a note found in Chris's pocket was a threat. The forensics evidence proves to be inconclusive to a suspect. Sophie Richardson reporting from Prado Community High School. And now with how the press covered the story with Lewis. The press coverage of the situation has been a mess. One paper, The Dependent, has been frightening the public with false information on the crime and publicly shaming the members of the crime scene investigation team, calling them untraining, saying they're struggling to provide input in this high-profile case. Also, the paper continues to say that Chief Inspector Lauren Eustace and her team are unable to find lost cats, let alone mur murderers, undermining her authority and implying the police are unable to do their jobs. Today, the defendant has released another article which yet again undermines the forensic team's analysis, saying they are untrained, therefore undermining the forensics and police authority by suggesting they have arrested the incorrect person. <laughs> there's, been a lot of, there's been a lot of arguments between yourselves and the press. What's your view on that? Uh, well, the press has released a lot of uh, bad reputation for the police, which is just going to affect us in court. But there's no reason why we can't cooperate with the ways that we have gone about things, but I understand that uh, Officer Harry Potter has been suspended under correct protocol, so yeah, I do believe we deserve some of it. Okay, um, will you be bringing up things like this in court? Uh, I'm not sure if I will be defending my case, certainly, but if so, I will happily take anything, uh, any criticism towards us about the suspended officer, but under any other ways about corruption, we definitely just do it not that was from our correspondent, Adam. We'll be moving on to how the police handled the investigation with Darcy. This is what police do in their spare time when there's a murder. What you have just witnessed are actual police officers messing around while on, while on investigation for a murder. This behaviour has been seen by more than just me. Can you confirm the bad behaviour of some police officers? Yes, the police officers have been acting very immaturely. They have climbed on the walls and this just proves that some of the police officers do not take their job properly and are not committed to the investigation. To confirm more of this bad behaviour, we have an interview with Chief Inspector Lauren Eustace and in the background are officers acting immature. Okay, how do you feel about James Denethy's bit about you not being able to find cats, let alone a murderer? I think that was very sort of unprofessional. I feel like that was personal because me and James have an odd friendship and I felt that was quite personal rather than professional just because the only reason he wrote that is because we didn't want to tell him information 
in order to not jeopardise the case and he took that as us not actually knowing what we were doing and really we did, we just didn't want to tell him because well, well, right we didn't know at that point. Uh, how do you feel, the, like, how well do you think the police force are getting on? Do you think they are organised, professional? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Even I agree, yesterday it was a bit hectic but it was bound to be, but today's a lot better and yeah, everything's under control and everyone knows what they're doing, so yeah. So you believe the police are handling this very well and are being professional, even looking at Jake there? <laughs> I'm going to say the majority are, or maybe one or two. Right. Nothing about. Okay. It has been an eventful day as I have witnessed the awful behaviour of some officers and how they handle a major investigation. Back to you in the studio. Over, over to our sports story with Adam on how Germany won the World Cup and the youngster Goethe scored the winning goal. The biggest game of the year, two giants of football, Germany and Argentina, faced off in the Maracana. The game was tense and tight going into extra time. The extra time proved useful for Germany as in the 113th minute, super sub Mario Goethe scored the winning goal with a volley leading to praise from German coach Lowe, calling him a boy wonder. This steered the way to Germany's fourth World Cup victory, leaving Argentina embarrassed by their lack of accuracy, especially from their superstar, Messi. This is Adam, signing out from Brazil. Thank you, Adam. That's all from Fuse News team. Good night.